Light work, no reaction. Light work, no reaction. Whew. Okay, it's got a little kick. Are you mentally stable? Or are you attracted to this? The fuck up and turn around. Hands on the desk. Keep them there. Put your head down. Hold it. How is he so fucking hot? Hold it. I will stand with you between the heavens and the earth. I will tell you where you are. Do you love me? I love you! From the moment... From the moment I saw you trying to go over the wall. I have loved you desperately. I cannot breathe when you are not near. I love you, Charlotte. My heart calls your name. Это, конечно, больно, но я сейчас покажу, как это сделать красиво. Итак, кладем книгу корешком на стол, отгибаем обложечку и аккуратненько пальчиками проминаем. Отгибаем странички, пальчиками проходимся. И продолжаем это делать до тех пор, пока ну, у нас тут странички не кончатся. Как итог, странички отлично открываются, ничего заламываться не будет, особенно на корешке. I need to tell you about this book. I've never seen anyone talk about it on Book Talk. It is a pretty new release, but it's the only male written female protagonist that I've ever enjoyed. It's very intentionally pretentious, and I had to Google what words meant on almost every single page. But this author's sense of humor scratches an itch in my brain like no other. It's about a French book translator. It's called Bad Eminence. It's by James Greer. It is incredible. I would highly, highly recommend it. The book also contains photos and these funny little fake sponsored content drink recipes. Miss for a dollar, who seems like a terrible person? Uh, oh my God, I can't say the first person that came to mind. No, say it. I guess, I, no, I can't say, say it. it. No, I can't say it. Say it. I don't know. Say it. Say it. The answer is Leo Remedy. Welcome to the slow reading side of Book Talk, where reading is not a competition. We don't do readathons, we don't read 15 books every month, and it doesn't matter if we're behind on our Goodreads reading goal. We don't feel pressured to annotate every single book just for the sake of adding tabs. There are days in which we don't even pick up a book, and that's okay. We read when we can, and at our own pace. The thing I love more than books is a challenge. So when I saw this 100 books bucket list scratch off challenge, I obviously had to get it. I started off with scratching off all the books that I had actually already read, just to make the challenge a little bit easier for me. And I'm not gonna lie, it was very therapeutic. And then I chose a book I wanted to read next, which was A Secret History by Donna Tartt. I was gifted this book a few years back, it's been on my radar for a while, so I was happy to finally be able to start it. And I really had no idea what to expect. All I knew was dark academia. But this book had me absolutely shook. This was my expression throughout the entire book. I've never read a book where I've disliked so many of the characters. And I know this was a point, and I know it's a satire, but some of the language was very shocking. So just be warned, because this book is absolutely mad. My brain is just completely scrambled. I'm going to be reading American Gods at some point this year. I'm pretty excited for this book, but the copy I have is, uh, it's stiff. So come with me. Let's have some fun and get this read ready. Alright, and just like that, we have a very uh, comfortable, I went a little too hard. <laughs> right there, you can see. But, uh, you know, ready to roll. I am a big fan of Books Are Sick. I think Nick gives great recommendations. However, when it comes to how to break in a book, I would not listen to him. No, 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 I would not. I have had multiple people 
recommend Neil Gaiman to me. So when I saw American Gods on the shelf, I thought, hey, I should give this a shot. And when I saw Nick say how you should break in American Gods, I said, hey, I should try something different. Part of me hopes that Nick will see this and say, hmm, maybe there are better ways to do this. <laughs> Another part of me knows that he's going to see this and laugh with fire in his eyes and know that it's hopeless to get him to change his ways. <laughs> but if you want to talk about good flop, whew, check that out. Oh, yeah. Look at how open that is now. It's beautiful. Beautiful. El Kindle es la mejor inversión que he hecho en mi vida, se la recomiendo a todo el mundo y te voy a decir por qué. Como buena lectora romántica yo obviamente quería solo leer en papel y amaba el papel y los libros y decía como no que fome leer en algo digital. Pero uno, los libros son súper caros. Un libro nuevo fácilmente te puede salir 30 lucas. El libro. ¿Y cuánto me demoro en leer un libro? Una semana, incluso menos, depende de qué tan metida esté en el libro. Cuando se te acaba también necesitas tiempo para ir a comprarte uno nuevo. Y por esa y varias razones más me di cuenta que yo no estaba leyendo mucho. Porque yo decía como, pucha, me quiero leer esta saga nueva, pero en verdad que yo yo leo esta saga vale como 100 lucas, es mucha plata. Y sí, el Kindle también vale como 90, 100 lucas app, pero uno lo puede encontrar en ofertas en Amazon, en Falabella, en Ripley, en multitiendas, etc. Cuando haces el cálculo de que este aparatito te vale más o menos 3 o 4 libros nuevos, dices como wow, es una inversión. Kindle ahora de hecho vienen con Wi-Fi, entonces desde el mismo Kindle, si tú tienes una cuenta en Amazon, puedes comprar libros en Amazon y se descargan aquí automáticamente demasiado rápido. Yo tengo el de 16 GB y te alcanza para millones y millones y millones. Y el hecho de que los libros en digital valen mucho más barato, no sé, un libro te puede costar 7 dólares, incluso hay suscripciones como Kindle Unlimited que tú pagas, no sé cuánto se paga, pero son como menos de 10 dólares y tú puedes leer todos los libros que tú quieras que estén en Kindle Unlimited. E incluso como yo, si eres una rata, yo la verdad los descargo pirata en C Library. Tengo un video de eso también en mi perfil de cómo descargar los libros gratis. Pero bueno, en síntesis, yo encuentro que el Kindle es una inversión. Yo también entiendo que leer en papel siempre es como más romántico y más feliz y lo que sea. Pero una vez que tú tienes el Kindle, en verdad no lo dejas porque es súper cómodo leer en esto. Te lo lleva ahí a todas partes. Y por nada, yo siento que leo más rápido en el Kindle que en papel. No sé por qué, pero bueno, lo puedo llevar a todas partes. Como que tengo que esperar en algún lugar, me lo llevo siempre como en vez de sacar el celular. Así que yo recomiendo el Kindle a ojo cerrado. O sea, si yo pudiera ser influencer de algo, porfa que Kindle me contrate. Porque lo amo. Encuentro que es la mejor inversión que he hecho en mi vida. So I've read 54 books this year so far and only 7 of them were 5 stars. So I'm going to show you which ones they are. Okay, starting off we have Flock and Exodus by Kate Stewart. This series has my entire heart. I didn't add the finish line to this because that book didn't really feel like it was needed. I gave it a 4 stars. I loved it still, but it just wasn't needed. But these two books have my entire heart, so much so that I have dreams about these characters. I think about them every single day. This series changed my life, and I will forever be grateful that this was written and that I was able to experience this. Like, I love these books so damn much. Next, we have Don't Let Me Go by Kelsey Ray. This is a fluffy hockey romance, one of my favorite hockey romances I've ever read. This is actually the second book in a series. I do have two of them. Kelsey Ray herself sent me the hardback. Love her so much. This book is the reason I even fell in love with hockey books in the first place. So one of my faves. Would recommend to anybody. Next, we have Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I read this book the first time and for me, I was more interested in the love triangle situation and I was like, whatever. And then my mom died and I read this book a second time and it was a completely different book for me. I didn't even notice the love triangle. I noticed more so Macy's situation and that was crazy to me that this book became two different books for me in the span of a month and uh it holds a really special place in my heart now and i just i would protect this book with my life next we have verity by colleen hoover if there was a different name right here everyone would love this book i know people get freaked out when something is by colleen hoover i'm not one to freak out about the author this book is amazing and i don't care what anybody says if there was a different name right here you would love this book I just would like to say that. So anyway, this book is great. I have yet to find a book that tops this when it comes to like a mind fuck book. I've read a lot of mysteries and thrillers, you guys, a lot. And I've yet to find one that made me sit up at night and think the way this one did. And I'm just waiting for something to come along and top this one. 
Next we have Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This is one of those books that I'm not even finished with yet and I already know it's going to be one of my favorite books I've ever read in my entire life. I'm so consumed by this book. I have, I'm tabbing it like crazy. I've never tabbed a book so much before. Um, yeah, not even finished with it. One of my faves. Lastly, we have Credence. This is one of my favorite books in the world. I have a signed copy from Penelope Douglas. I just wanted to live inside this book. I never wanted it to end. Noah is one of my favorite book boyfriends. No deeper meaning. I just simply love this book. So yeah, these are my faves. Oh, <laughs>